Satoshi had the right idea. Do you like Japanese girls? It feels like we're in a nightclub and the lights just turned on. What nightclub are you at? I wish I was old enough to go to nightclubs. They sound so fun. Weird. Profoundly weird and strange. Is this a real Pion video? Um, it's a good thing that journalists exist and they do due diligence and that they have editorial teams and they have people looking after what they say and or do to make sure that no one just runs out there and does wild stuff all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm here for this as someone who gives his opinion on the internet. It's necessary that journalists do their due diligence. However, because of their checks and balances and their rigid standards and legal teams and lawyers and such, they can't report on things immediately while it's speculative, obviously, right? But that's why you need good old sloppy Joe here. Because I'll bring you, you know, premium slop uh, from a trough where, where I'm actually very curious about these stories uh, as they're happening. Uh, for example, right now, uh, Alejandro Caraballo is pretty close to connecting all the dots uh, to allegedly proving that Jack Pasebic has been running the End Wokeness account. Uh, so that's actually a secret account of Jack Pasebic, allegedly. Um, but like, not all the dots are there. Certainly not enough yet for a, you know, person of any kind of repute. Uh, Matt Binder, for example, to then do an article saying, hey, this is the story. And when this one first broke, a while ago, I want to say, when Elon's weird-ass burner account where he pretends to be his own son, but who's also kind of, like, into sexual stuff and flirts with people and posts embarrassing shit online, when all of that stuff was, like, you know, alleged... I, I was talking about it. I was like, this really looks like, an Elon, like it's Elon Musk's burner account, right? Like, you, you remember the one, the one that was like, is this porn? I, I want to go quubbing. Oh, what's a night quub like? And, and then weird shit like that. Utterly bizarre. But Elon Musk basically showed a screenshot where his uh, account was logged into two accounts. One of those two accounts had the same avatar from this burner account. So because of that, everyone was kind of like already connecting the dots. But there wasn't conclusive proof. And because there wasn't conclusive proof, it wasn't something that anyone could point towards and, and say, you know, definitively, this was Elon Musk, right? It's all speculation. Super weird if it's him. Super embarrassing if it's him. But we don't have proof uh, until now. Uh, this deposition that recently came out about Elon Musk, if you haven't been following it, it's pretty wild. Um, he's basically being sued for falsely accusing a 22-year-old Jewish man of being a neo-Nazi and participating in a neo-Nazi brawl as part of some kind of psyop stuff. Now, it turns out the person that he was accusing and a lot of people on the far right were accusing online, uh, it turns out that they misidentified someone in a picture and then tried to put that picture with a person who was a student uh, at this school and uh, the student at the school was not the same person in the photo, was not participating in a neo-Nazi rally and has uh, sued Elon Musk effectively for that and then the uh the lawyer or sorry the judge in this lawsuit has said that it is in the public interest to uh reveal uh the very embarrassing facts about elon musk that are now out Elon Musk's erratic posting on X, formerly Twitter, has come back to haunt him once again as a 22-year-old Jewish man pursues a defamation case over tweets in which the tech mogul baselessly suggested the recent college graduate was an undercover federal agent posing as a neo-Nazi during a street brawl between far-right groups. Musk's excruciating March 27 deposition on the matter, which the judge ordered released to the public over the objections of the CEO's lawyer, was the first obtained by HuffPo, reveals the extent to which he has continuously sabotaged both himself and the social media platform he owns. X is, quote, the most accurate time timely and truthful place on the internet, Musk said during his questioning about a false statement he made on the site that has been viewed by over a million users and is yet to be retracted or deleted almost a year later. The lawsuit brought in October by Ben Brody of California concerns one of the many false conspiracy theories that Musk has fallen for and amplified since acquiring, uh, acquiring Twitter. Last June, as members of the fascist Proud Boy gang brawled with the Rose City Nationalist and neo-Nazi organization of the Pacific Northwest at an LGBTQ plus pride event in Oregon that both sought to disrupt, several RNC, or RCN participants were unmasked. Internal sleuths went to work matching names to their faces but the far-right account hoping to frame the violence as a, quote, false flag event, incorrectly identified Brody as one of the participants, circulating a picture of him from an Instagram account from Alpha Epsilon Pi, the Jewish fraternity to which he belonged, as a student at the University of Riverside, California. In fact, Brody had been in California at that time, and this misinformation was based on nothing more than the slightest resemblance between Brody and the individual at the event. To summarize, if you don't understand this, there's been a lot of neo-Nazi action going on in the United States, and obviously a lot of the people who have been advocating 
lobbying for a lot of anti-LGBTQ plus stuff. Uh, everyone from the quartering to IRI check to JK Rowling, Matt Walsh, you name it. Uh, a lot of them have had to contend with the fact that at these rallies sometimes, Nazis show up on their side. And that obviously doesn't look great when you're on the same side as the Nazis doing the same things that historically the Nazis did back in the day. So they want to distance themselves from that sometimes. Sometimes there's brawls, sometimes there's, uh, you know, conflicting. Hey, was that actually a neo-Nazi or was it a plant? Would a neo-Nazi carry a neo-Nazi flag, have it inside their truck as they're driving that truck towards the White House? It all seems a little sussy-wussy, right? Why would a neo-Nazi do that? Would a neo-Nazi shooter who is committing a horrifying racist shooting event, would, would they have a swastika tattooed on their chest? Hmm. Would they be following a whole bunch of right-wing pundits? Hmm. Kind of seems sussy wussy, if you ask me. Kind of seems like a lot of these people. I mean, that, that Nazi wasn't even white. Uh, can non-white people be racist? Can non-white people be neo-Nazis? Can non-white people fall into white supremacist ideology or want to uphold or fight or kill for a white supremacist ideology? Apparently, only the whites can do that. So that uh, sussy wussy, all of it's really sussy. As this keeps happening, all these conspiracy theories start spreading. This was a really big one that was amplified, obviously, by Elon Musk. Musk, in which, hey, this individual actually may be working for the CIA or maybe a plant or something else because he happens to be Jewish. He's part of a Jewish fraternity, after all, but he was also appearing as part of that neo-Nazi brawl. Turns out he is not the same person, and that's super fucked up, like super, super fucked up that, that, that you went down this hole. The Instagram posts describe Brody as a political science major who wanted to work in government after graduation. Details that extremists used to implicate him in a supposed plot by federal agencies to stage a violent clash between the hard right groups. Twice, Musk boosted these misleading claims. In one case, replying, always remove their masks to a crypto influencer who accused federal agencies of, quote, planting fake Nazis at rallies. Finally, Musk replied to an anonymous blogger who posted about a white supremacist unmasked and suspected Fed, writing, looks like one in is a college student who wants to join the government, and another is maybe an Antifa member, but nonetheless, a probable false flag situation. Nonetheless, a probable false flag situation. Remember when Musk was complaining about how political all the like the people who work at Twitter were being publicly using their accounts on the platform? <laughs> Remember those days? Brody's attorney, Mark Bankston, who previously won Sandy Hook parents $45 million in damages from Alex Jones in a suit over the conspiracy kingpin's false claims that the deadly school shooting never happened, has argued that Musk defamed Brody in the last post with the college grad at his family docks and harassed to the point where they were forced to flee their own home, which is really fucked up. Uh, Mark uh, Bankston says, readers of the tweet who were familiar with the rumor immediately understood Musk was referring to Ben Brody by the college student who wants to join the government. In fact, numerous Twitter users replied to Musk's tweets throughout the day, telling him that he was wrong about Ben. But it didn't matter. Musk's endorsement of the accused galvanized several so social media users and influencers to continue their attacks and harassment, as well as posts and share accusations against Ben that will remain online forever. Cross-examining Musk on his social media habits last month, Bankston got into a testy exchange with both the billionaire's attorney, Alex Spiro, as well as Musk himself, who complained that Bankston lacked decor Forum. Spiro successfully defended Musk in a previous defamation case for a tweet in which he'd insulted a British cave diver by calling him, quote, pedo guy during the efforts to rescue a Thai youth soccer team trapped in a flooded cave system. Despite his offenses, Musk was backed into several embarrassing statements and commented early on that he had a, quote, limited understanding of, quote, what the lawsuit is about. You don't even understand? Did, did your lawyer not tell you? The lawyer probably paying a lot of money to defend you? Was he not like, here's why you're here, Musk? So, yeah, it turns out this guy that uh, you're insinuating was part of this neo-Nazi rally is not the same person. He was misidentified. So the, the whole conspiracy that he wanted to join the government, and so that's why he's a plant and that he's actually a Jewish Nazi, th that's all made up. It, it's really fucked up that, that yeah, and, and you are the owner and operator of this website, so you, you do have a lot of sway and pull when, when you spread these conspiracy theories. Musk was reluctant to even acknowledge that Brody had brought the lawsuit. He more than once commented that Bankston was the true plaintiff and interested in, quote, getting a lot of money. Bankston, however, pushed through the subject of the suit itself, getting Musk to confirm that he had not done anything to independently verify the identity of the RCN member, misidentifying his Brody before his alleged defamatory tweet. Asked if, if he had, quote, other information about this unmasked brawler, besides what he'd seen from a handful of extremist accounts pushing the false flag conspiracy theory, Musk replied, I don't recall securing other information. And again, you fucking nerd, you evil nerd, all right? And I say that again as a nerd, but fucking evil nerd. Like, uh, I don't recall securing other information. That's that's the, the dialogue tree that, that you selected as all the potential options when, when being questioned. 
He also granted the point that everything he supposedly knew about the brawler came from those tweets. Yes, he gathers information from other people on Twitter and then uses that to spread conspiracy theories. It's now as clear as day, but also a matter of public record that that's what's happening. So every single time you're like, wow, it really seems like Musk is lost in the sauce, you know, the white supremacist sauce. He's just fucking drinking that Kool-Aid down. Yeah, he is. He is. He is not verifying what he talks about. He's not double checking it. I don't know if it's just because he's fucking uh, completely zonked on horse tranquilizers, but whatever the case may be, he is now spreading dangerous misinformation. Oftentimes it's anti-Semitic. Oftentimes it's racist. Oftentimes it's racist towards black people, racist towards indigenous people. Oftentimes it's really, really anti-LGBTQ+. And yes, he's spreading these conspiracy theories without actually doing any due diligence as to whether or not they are true. Bankston further pushed Musk on the dubious sources, asking if he clicks through the profiles and feeds the scan for, quote, red flags when it comes to reliability. Quote, I wasn't trying to access their credibility, Musk said of one account he engaged with, which Bankston pointed out had posted anti-Semitic content the same day it shared the Brody conspiracy theory. Musk contended that even if he'd been aware of such a troubling agenda from the user he had relied on for other information, he couldn't automatically discount their views. You know, like once in a while, a conspiracy theorist is going to be right, he told Bankston. This is real. This is the level to which we are dealing with. This is why it's so dangerous to have billionaires, just in general, to have people who become this powerful in society that could also be this 4chan brained, and, and that this individual has the amount of power he has by controlling this massive social media platform in the way that he sees fit at all times. And this is as far as he's willing to go. If you point out to him the very source that you were using to spread an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory about a 20-year-old Jewish student being a neo-Nazi, it turns out that same person was posting anti-Semitic conspiracy theories the same fucking day that he posted this one. You're still not willing to discount it? You're, you're still like, well, I mean, he, he could be right, you know, broken clock. I'll use the broken clock defense, genuinely, yes. It gets worse. Elsewhere in the deposition, Musk criticized the mainstream media and the, quote, so-called misinformation experts and insisted that X had better ways of ensuring accuracy. In particular, he praised the platform's community notes feature as, quote, the best system on the internet when it comes to fact-checking. Yet Musk has at times taken issue with the community notes on his own tweets. And though he take community notes in his post endorsing the erroneous false flag claims about the Oregon Malie, he, the post never received a correction. Musk conceded that there's always some risks what I say is incorrect, but said this had to be balanced against a chilling effect on free speech in general, which would undermine the entire foundation of our democracy. Again, delusions of grandeur mixed in with me trying to protect myself, right? Well, the, this is more than me. It's greater than me, you see. Yes, and, and that's because this is ultimately about free speech. You're just a racist, you know? When, when people point out that you're spreading racist conspiracy theories over and over and over again, there is no greater calling there. There, there is no higher purpose. At, at the end of the day, you're a fucking racist, you're spreading a completely debunkable racist conspiracy theory, and now you're trying to defend yourself by being like, once again, this is more than me. It is more than a man. It's a symbol, a message even, you know? You are not the hero we deserve. At times, Musk was forced to wrestle with his own reckless actions as the owner and prime influencer of X. I may have done more to financially impair the company than to help it, he told Banks in one exchange, adding, I do not guide my post by what is financially beneficial, but what I see is interesting or important or entertaining to the public. Endangering people, endangering trans people, you know, endangering Jewish people, endangering black people, endangering indigenous people, dare I say, even endangering poor white people who you just throw under the bus, like all in service of what? The memes? The epic memes? It gets worse. Musk confirmed, too, that one exhibit entered into the court record showed another account he operates for, quote, test purposes. The profile, at Ermin Musk, came to light a year ago as a probable secret Musk account because he tweeted an image showing himself logged into it, and Motherboard then reported on a number of indications that it was likely his. Some since deleted, the at Ermin Musk tweets appeared to show Musk posting in characters as his own son, XAA12, uh, his toddler son with singer Grimes, announcing his fourth birthday or saying, I wish I was old enough to go to nightclubs. They sound fun. Other tweets were more risque, including one that asked, do you like Japanese girls? Bankston has alleged that Musk deactivated this account on the received the account on the day in February that a discovery court order came down. It also appears someone else may have seized the handle to post memes and jokes in keeping with Musk's sense of humor. 
So wait, what did you handed off the fake burner account in which you pretend to be your own son, but just hypersexualizing people and yourself on that account at the same time, which is again super super weird to a stranger to post the epic memes in absentium. How fucking weird can you get, my dude? And I, I want to take a trip down memory lane if we can and, and look at some absolute bangers from Elon Musk uh, now confirmed here. So here's one. Satoshi had the right idea. Do you like Japanese girls? It feels like we're in a nightclub and the lights just turned on. What nightclub are you at? I wish I was old enough to go to nightclubs. They sound so fun. Weird. Profoundly weird and strange. Is this a real Pion video? Uh, uh, responding to a porn video? With is this a real Pion video? Hmm. Again, uh, profoundly, profoundly uh, weird. This one. Uh, I finally turn uh, three on May 4th. How about this one? Bro had a net worth of 16 billion USD and risked it all for this? The grippy must have been unfathomable. Elon responds, I love librarians. Ugh, it's not even the most embarrassing one. We gotta save the best for last. Grimes left the king of SpaceX? <laughs> laughing emoji, laughing emoji. Her kids must hate her. They probably want to spend all their time with Mr. Tesla. Laughing emoji, laughing emoji, laughing emoji. Now that we have confirmation that this is in fact Elon Musk, this is the most, the most divorced tweet of all time, I will say. We have a lot of uh, heavy hitters, a lot of competition, of course. You, you got Glinner, you got Ye, you know, you got Destiny as well. There's, there's a lot of people, Steven Crowder, Steven Crowder's in the club. Um, but this right here, this, this has to be, I would say, the most divorced tweet uh, of all time, knowing that it is in fact Elon Musk. So, yeah. But I, I'm really happy this is all public information now. I mean, I'm really happy that people are allowed to now, if you want to, go do deep dives. You might have to go in the internet archives to find some of the other tweets that, of course, uh, Elon Musk, or should I say uh, XAE12, or Earn Musk, uh, was making about that. Musk dropped the name of the second burner account as well, though it may have been recorded incorrectly in the transcript of the deposition, which has it as, quote, Baby Smoke 9000. There is no active X profile with that handle, though a verified account at Baby Smurf 9000 interacts with many of the same accounts that Musk follows and engages with, retweets official X company accounts, and posts in the emoji laden style similar to Musk. Can also be found disparaging the billionaire Mark Cuban, whom Musk has routinely criticized of late as, quote, an idiot. That post came as Musk feuded with Cuban via his main account over DEI programs in early January. Mark Cuban says, I have to say that over the past 24 hours, I found X to be warm and welcoming. The diversity of responses in both tone and, tone and content has been heartwarming. I do have to block one account with a large number of followers, but beyond that, I appreciate all the engagement. Baby Smurf 9000 says, you are an idiot. Also verified. Other strange revelations that the interview included Mr. Musk's claims that he was unaware Brody is seeking a retraction of the false flag post in order to clear his name. At the time, the college grad had made a viral Instagram video refuting the conspiracy theory and asking for people to leave his family alone. That what he tweets out to millions of followers isn't always seen by that many people and that he doesn't believe Brody has been, quote, meaningfully harmed by this because it is rare for media attacks to have a meaningful negative impact on their targets. Those comments sometimes drew incredulous responses from Bankston, who said, wow, when Musk said that Brody he hadn't been harmed by his false flag tweets about him. After Bankston wrote some inquiries into whether Musk felt that he had been reckless or failed to take responsibility for his actions, Bankston and Spiro argued more about the scope of the questioning before concluding the proceedings with a debate as to whether the transcript would be confidential by a protective order. Bankston stated for the record that his opinion, Spiro had conducted himself inappropriately, had completely shut down many segments of the deposition. As for the protective order to seal the transcript, Bankston said he would wait to hear from the court and that we, quote, don't, we don't recognize that request as valid. Clearly, neither did the court. The story has been updated to credit HuffPost reporting and uh, clarify the status of Musk's original burner account. Neat stuff. Um, if you're also wondering what's going on with uh, Brazil, because uh, a lot of the right are once again uh, ignoring all of the embarrassing stuff and talking about this instead, which uh, the timing of it all is 
uh, awesome, I guess, for Musk, because now everyone can talk about how Musk is free speech, man, again, in Brazil, but only in Brazil. Uh, yes, in Brazil, Musk is to find orders uh, to uh, provide information on people uh, who have Twitter accounts who are suspected to be involved in the far-right coup attempt of Lula da Silva. So he's taking a stance. He doesn't want any far-right coup attempters uh, to, to have to deliver any kind of uh, information to the government, that kind of stuff. So on that, Musk is uh, taking a stance against government censorship. But to be honest, uh, Musk has compiled with almost every government request for censorship since Musk took over. Twitter has fully complied with more than 80% of government and courts requests for move or alter content since Elon Musk bought the company, up from around 50% before he took over. So he is less free speechy uh, in terms of uh, adhering to government, oftentimes uh, authoritarian governments, by the way. I mean, if it's uh, Modi in, in India, he is completely fine with doing uh, what he wants to suppress the speech of the citizens of that country. Uh, but when it comes to investigations into far-right insurrections in Brazil, uh, he doesn't want to participate in that particular kind. So his position on this is very clear. Uh, he is fine censoring people, fine censoring citizens, and fine censoring people who happen to be persecuted minorities in uh, in countries. Uh, you know, if they happen to be Muslim minorities, uh, Sikh minorities, uh, Hindu minorities in India, um, then uh, their oppression is going to be part of Musk's own uh, free speech campaign. Let's just say that too. Turkey as well. Yeah, Turkey's uh, Turkey's another example that again, it's it's all bullshit that anyone can see through unless you happen to be either the biggest fucking like Musk sycophant or you're one of the right wingers who's just holding on to this whole thing. Like, oh god, this is just so cool. Look at him fighting for free speech. Yeah, he's he's fighting for the kind of speech that y'all want free, right? White people being able to say the N-word, uh, being able to call uh, indigenous people every racial slur that they can come up with, being able to misgender and dead name trans people, being able to say that, uh, you know, gay people uh, all have AIDS, things like that. That's the speech that, that he's fighting for, that, to, to be able to protect far-right insurrectionists as they, they plan failed coup attempts. That's that's the speech he wants to protect. Uh, if you happen to be a minority that has been persecuted by your government uh, or an authoritarian government is trying to prevent, uh, you know, some kind of civil rights movement, well, then he wants to oppress your speech. Then he wants to silence you then he wants to you know big old big old caring about the whole thing so yeah when's he going to publish the brazil twitter files uh, i guess uh, he'll have to call up matt Taibbi and see if he's willing to participate in that howdy everybody i just wanted to let you know that for the cost of a cup of coffee you can unlock bonus uncensored episodes of mind explosions by going to patreon.com slash the serves our videos couldn't exist without your support, and all our content is released early to our Patreon subscribers, as well as a ton of extra content you can't get anywhere else. Please like, subscribe, and thumbs up this channel, and if you're feeling extra perky, share it anywhere you think people would like to see or learn from our videos. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We first want to give a shout out to everyone who makes this show possible. This program is produced thanks to the generous support of our Patreon supporters. Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hegbar Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multi Mondi, Omni, Peanut Butter Blondie, Political Poppy, Preston Kroll, Quite 185, Richard Bomey, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Ruby, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demmel, Travis McClinton, and Words Greenwood. As well as every other person you see on the screen right now, this show would not be possible without them. And if you want to join these wonderful people who make this entire program possible, simply go to patreon.com slash the service and you can unlock uncensored and bonus episodes and, you know, help us exist.